In this video we're going to take a look at the payment function. The payment function can be used for two different cases. One is to find the what your payment on a loan is going to be. The other one is to find out how much you need to save on a regular basis to reach a savings goal. Um, probably the more common use of it is to find out what your payment on a loan would be. So we're going to do that one first. Okay, so um, we want to find the payment on a $150,000 30-year loan. Payments will be made monthly and the annual interest rate is 6%. Payments are at the end of the month and the balance at the end of the 30 years will be zero. Okay, so uh, the amount borrowed is how much money you have now is always your present value. So if you borrow 150000 today, that's how much money you have today and that's your present value. So uh, that's 150000 uh, the payment is what we're trying to find out here, so I'm just going to fill that in gray, and we'll do the function actually over here. Uh, the number of periods per year, most of the time that's going to be 12, and it is in this case as well, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, the number of years is 30. The annual interest rate is 6.00%, and the ending balance is going to be zero, and the um, number of periods is calculated for us because again I'm putting a formula in there that multiplies these two numbers together. That's the important number. You don't directly use these two numbers in your calculations. Same thing down here. That takes the 6% and divides it by 12 so I find out what my monthly rate is and that's the number that matters not the two numbers up here. Okay. And then are we doing this at the end of the month or the beginning of the month? Well, we're doing it at the end of the month, so a zero is the code for the end of the month, and one is the code for the beginning of the month. Okay, so I've got all the information I need right here, and in particular, the important stuff is the five values here. Again, you only use four because you're trying to compute the fifth one that are in parentheses here and in big bold letters. These are the actual names of the functions in Excel. And there is a sixth item that we need, and that's uh, this down here. Okay, so let's go over here where we're going to put our answer, and let's do the payment function. So let's go to our formulas tab. Let's go to our green book with coins on the front, and that's our financial functions. And I want to find the payment function. These are alphabetical, so scroll down to the P's. And someplace in the P's, uh, notice there's actually two of them here. Be careful that you don't get this one. Uh, you want the PMT function. So click on OK. And as usual, Excel gives us a dialog box. And the rate is the rate per period. Okay, so the rate per period is this. And it'll show you over here half a percent. And the number of periods is this number here. And the present value is how much money you have right now. So you have the money, not the bank. So that is a positive number. And the future value is going to be this cell here. Don't put zero in. Don't ever put cell ref or numbers in if you can help it. Um, put cell references in when you're providing function arguments, and it'll make it easier uh, to redo the function with different numbers. And then the type is always zero or one. In this case, it's a zero. Again, don't build the zero in. Uh, put it over here so it's easy to change. So our payment is going to be $899 and about 33 cents. Now you notice there's a minus sign in front of that, and the reason for that is because negative numbers uh, are always used to represent the payment in all of these problems that we're looking at uh, for financial functions. Okay, so let's click on OK, and it will tell us what our payment is. And it's going to show up in red and with parentheses around it, so Excel is kind of making double sure that we know it's a negative number. Red alone would have been enough, or the parentheses alone would have been enough, but they're doing both of them. And if you don't want that to show up as negative in your results, which I don't think you do, uh, just go up here to the formula bar and put a minus sign in front of PMT and hit enter, and it'll turn that around and make it into a positive number instead of a negative number. And again, we have just solved every single loan payment problem that you can think of. All you have to do is change the amount that you borrow, the number of periods per year, the number of years, the rate, uh, the ending balance, you know, and these two get calculated, and then whether it's the beginning or the end. So that's how you use the payment function for calculating your payment on a loan. And the, in the next example, we'll take a look at using the payment function to compute how much you need to uh, reach a savings goal at some point in the future.